Okay, so welcome everyone to our very exciting live final talk for today's virtual open day. My name is Denise Dowling and I'm a student recruitment coordinator here at Carlow College. So one of the questions really that I get a lot when I'm out and about at schools is what kind of careers our past graduates have gone on to pursue. So I'm delighted to have some past graduates of Carlow College here with me today. Um, I'd like to give a very warm welcome to Annette Fox, Carlow College graduate and current CEO of the Carlow County Development Partnership. Donica O'Mahony, oh, sorry, O'Mahony, <laughs> Carlow College graduate, guidance counsellor and host of the Leaving, popular Leaving Cert podcast, guidance podcast. And Francis Gann then, who is a Carlow College graduate in social care and now lectures for us here at Carlow College. So thank you all for joining us today. And before we get into um, the thick of it, I'm just gonna do a bit of housekeeping. So this session will run for about 40 minutes, give or take. Um, we'll leave some time at the end for some questions. Um, so during the session, if anybody watching has any questions, pop them into the Q&A box at the end and I'll put them to our panelists then. Okay, so uh, yeah, to kick things off then, I suppose we'll just get everyone to introduce themselves. Um, what you studied and where that has led into your career, something like that. So, Annette, I'll start with you, if that's OK. Thanks, Denise. Um, well, I came back as an adult learner, um, uh, having had, um, I suppose, a career. Most of my career has been spent in community development um, and project management of some way, shape or form. So I studied and we were one. We were the first class in what was called then called citizenship and community studies. So that's and that is back, I think, in 2009, possibly. Uh, so that was an excellent course. Yeah. Yeah. That's now called um, the Social, Political and Community Studies, just for those right. watching. Yeah. So then um, what did you do straight after that? Did you go in straight into? Well, I suppose my journey was probably a little bit different as, as an mm -hmm. adult learner. I had gone down the traditional route mm -hmm. at 18, you know, and have gone to mm -hmm. I, I, I studied communications in and we, that was my primary degree, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, did the traveling thing. You know, I'm one of those people yeah. who left in the 80s when we had the first recession. So, you yeah. know, there was all of all of that It was probably slightly you know, alternative lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, I worked for a long time in the UK, uh, worked a long time with community in, in terms of community development, project management, very much building what would be and what were called NVQs there, which would be mm -hmm. our VTech qualifications here. Um, and then for as many women do with no disrespect to the guys, <laughs> many guys do too. Um, but I was single parent, so I, I ended up taking a career break and, and mm -hmm. raising my children, I suppose. Now, I always stayed working, albeit part time and, and in various different situations. As they get old, got older, then the decision, I suppose, was um, some of my work previously was very much in business. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really want to go back into that area um, fully. So the opportunity was I, I needed to retrain. Mm -hmm. um, and I was also interested, you know, a bit of a nerd. So I liked that, you know, <laughs> the whole research side of things and, and following that through. So um, I was uh, running a business at the time and then I found this was this came up. And so that's how I came back into it. Absolutely loved the program. Mm -hmm. um, and then I left. I did a master's out in Carlo IT in Child, <laughs> Youth and Family mm -hmm. Studies. Um, and then I started working for Carlo County Development Partnership. Mm -hmm. So over the years, I've worked as um, right across the board, right mm. across all our various different programs and then as social inclusion manager. And now I'm CEO. Great. So it's, it's quite a, yeah, yeah. Quite diverse background. That's quite diverse. Great. Yeah, that's what we love. Um, so then I'll just move on to Donica. Then if you want to introduce yourself and just give a little bit of background of where you've gone since Carlo College. Yeah, so my name is Donico Mahoney, I'm a guidance counsellor, and I love to hear the likes of Annette's story, uh, where it's not just one definitive pathway, but there's lots of ways no. to get to where you want to go. So Annette is a great example for students today watching. Um, so I started, I just I was doing maths in my head when Annette was speaking there, in 2002, which is almost 20 years I think I'm a lot younger than that, but obviously I'm not. Um, and I did uh, humanities, uh, the, the honours degree in humanities, specialising in English, theology, history and philosophy. Um, after that, I did a year's uh, T 
teaching just to see what it was like. In, in 2006, when I did that, you could actually try out teaching without um, your teaching degree. You can't do that anymore. Probably one, one of the reasons why we're so short on substitute teachers and things <laughs> like that these days. Um, and I taught for a number of years. I taught history, English and religion. And that's the thing about the Carroll College degree, and I'll bring it up later on, um, is that you have three subjects from the humanities that the teaching council recognize for you to teach at secondary school, mm -hmm. where, you know, a lot of other teachers, I've never met a teacher outside of Carroll College that has three subjects recognized by the teaching council to teach. So that's a great thing about the humanities degree. So you're very, very employable afterwards. And then um, I went back and did a number of different masters, but one of them was uh, becoming a guidance counselor because I felt like I wanted to help and guide students find their own path. Um, and like I said, Annette's story is so interesting and I love to hear stories like that and love to use it as an example for other students that you will get to where you want to go. There's lots of options and opportunities. And then just before COVID struck, I had set up a social media page called See, Leave and Cert Guidance. And uh, as COVID, when we went to our first lockdown, I started to invite uh, different colleges on Instagram Live to... Uh, because all open days had stopped at that stage. So to come on and kind of sell their wares. And all of a sudden the social media page exploded and we started a podcast and still do Instagram lives. And it's a massive page today that gets about 20,000 visitors every month uh, to the social media page. And all kind of stem from my foundation uh, in Carlo College. That's great. Thanks, Danica. Yeah, and your podcast is great. Like, you know, we were on it there back in September and it's just... It really puts you on the map, especially when you're a co small college and you have that kind of audience and stuff, you know, and we can really get our voice across um, to maybe those schools that we don't visit as often. That's great. Thanks. And finally, Francis, over to you. Yes. Hi, all. Um, so here I am in my in my little office in Carroll College um, with my title as lecturer in social care. And sometimes I have to kind of shake myself a little bit and say, how, the, how did I end up here? Um, so like, um, like Annette, I suppose I, I started in Carroll College um, on the BA in, in Applied Social Studies, as it was at the time. Uh, it has since changed the title, which I, I'll talk about a little bit later, probably. Um, so I started in 2009 um, uh, on the BA. So prior to that, I am um, following so it was my my uh, my completion of my my uh, leaving cert. Um, I was I suppose ushered into into kind of the tr traditional roles that men normally would um, take on at that time. Um, to be honest, I was I was very uncertain about what I wanted to do at that stage as a as a young man. Um, but I ended up uh, completing a, an apprenticeship as an electrician at a time where there was so was a lot of demand for electricians and builders and tradespeople. So. Uh, I worked in that uh, um, for, for a number of years. Um, and then, as we all know, the, um, the crash happened, the economic crash. Um, I found myself then, I suppose, with a choice about what to, what to do with, with the rest of my life or what to, uh, like Annette, I, I, I was faced with the choice of, of retraining and wondering what I'd, I, I would do. Um, and actually at the time, and, uh, as Annette, I, uh, I was um, starting a, a family as well, so um, being unemployed and my, my, my wife was, um, uh, I suppose, the, the main breadwinner at that time. I was, I was um, thankfully um, at home as well, minding, minding my, children, my kids throughout my, um, throughout my education in Carver College, which, um, you know, on reflection was a really big help uh, to me in terms of my, my development, professional and personal development around caring and care work and things like that. It really helped me. Um, but uh, I relished the opportunity to come back to, to, to social care. Um, uh, as I've kind of on reflection again, it's, it really is my calling, as I, I, I would say it now. It is my calling. And I think that's perhaps the reason um, that I've ended up back in, in the college um, on, on the other end of the classroom, if you like, okay. um, trying to s support, teach and, and maybe in inspire, hopefully others to, to kind of to, to go on and do and do good things as well uh, on completion of their course. Um, so yeah. that's that's me. Perfect. That's great, Francis. And we were talking about that yesterday, actually, um, mm. you know, the kind of uh, trying to inspire 
young males in particular mm. to come on board to, uh, to social care because there's a stereotype there I think mm. and I see it when I'm in schools myself mm. you know or even just talking to young people there are still a certain amount of stereotypes that are around so it's great to have you on the panel today and to talk about it because hopefully students watching this will you know be inspired by it and, and um, choose to go into that or explore that career path at least okay so it's clear that each of you have had quite different career paths um, but I think one thing that we focus on here at Cardo College is helping students to develop the skills that are needed um, to succeed in those career paths. So Donica, I come to you and I'm just going to ask you how you think your degree helped you particularly when you were starting out in your career. Yeah, so a, a number of different ways. Um, uh, one of the main ones, I suppose, was I, I wasn't a great public speaker. I certainly wouldn't have done anything like this whatsoever. And uh, to stand in front of a class of 30 students each day, it certainly requires the ability to, to command an audience and, and to, to keep them interested. Uh, so communication skills were certainly, because I remember when I had to present my dissertation, I did it in, in, in history, and I had to present it in front of a room of my peers. Mm -hmm. And I think there's about four lectures on the stage as well. And you have 25 minutes to present your dissertation. Uh, for me, that was one of the key skills and, and overcoming things that I didn't like to do. Digital literacy was another one. Um, believe it or not, Google hadn't been invented by the time I was in uh, college. The internet had just become a big thing. And uh, developing those digital literacy skills to, um, to you know, present your essays, to present different projects, all had to be done online. Um, you know, things like critical thinking. Uh, I had Noel Kavanagh, who's still there for philosophy. Yeah. And if you're not a critical thinker uh, for philosophy, you will struggle a small bit. Critical thinking, even in English, with Derek Coyle, I know, is there as well. <laughs> Um, uh, Father Khan, who's the president, was my history teacher. Uh, you had to critical think, and it was something that I'd never experienced before because in secondary school, everything's uh, given to you. Um, and then the ability to research. Um, you know, it's again not like secondary school where I just said everything's given to you. You have to go and find out this information yourself, and you soon quickly find out how to research. Um, mm -hmm. You know, time management skills, again, as a teacher, if you're not good at time management, uh, you won't be very good at your job. But even meeting the likes of deadlines in college and things like that really helped develop those skills. So huge influence on, on how I am as a teacher today started with the foundation of the degree. That's great. Thanks, Donica. Yeah. And like even today, we still in, in all of our modules have an academic and digital skills module which helps students who maybe aren't very good with technology or come from, um, you know, uh, disadvantaged backgrounds, you know, maybe their schools didn't have technology while some schools, they have ample amounts of technology. So it is good. And that's one thing I love about Carlo College as well, is that it's really inclusive in that kind of way. Yeah. Um, so Francis, I'm going to come to you now. And you mentioned that you returned, like and that you returned as a mature student. And what motivated you to to social care and why Carlo College? I know you kind of touched on it, but just... yeah, I, I suppose um, for, for many people they come to social care and caring work because of personal experience, um, um, uh, which has allowed them to kind of, I suppose, to see. Um, firstly, I suppose disadvantage and struggles that some people have um, and they realize then that you know I can do something I, I want to do something about that to support other people and um, because of personal experience and um, I suppose my experience is I have a younger brother uh, with an intellectual disability so I, I, I grew up with it I grew up kind of caring for him himself and um, uh, it allowed me to see kind of struggles um, and how people are disadvantaged with disability um, and it's not just people with disability it can be you know young people children people from as you say deprived uh, disadvantaged backgrounds and so on so I suppose that awareness um, uh, throughout my my younger years and, and my young adult years um, probably was the defining kind of uh, moment in my decision to, to choose social care uh, and I think, um, as I mentioned earlier, 
you know, I was kind of ushered into a, a, a traditionally male job, if you like, which was the thing at the time. So in a way, the recession was a bit of a, a godsend for me. Mm. It was a bit of a blessing in disguise and that it gave me time to, to choose the thing that I was passionate about, I suppose. Um, yeah. And I think maybe I say people who are who are engaged in, in their, their leaving cert years now at the moment, um, they mightn't. Um, you know, have time or space or have thought about their the potential that they might have as social care workers. Um, so um, I think, you know, in, in terms of this webinar here today, it's a, it might help people to get thinking about, you know, the potential that they have, what, what we could offer to society, to people in our communities, to disadvantaged people as well. Um, and as it has turned out, you know, it's been one of the most rewarding decisions that I have made, you know, in, in, in my life. Um, so, yeah, that's that's really the motivation that yeah. I had to come to, to social care. And it took me a long time uh, to come around to that, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. And was there any like defining factor in your decision to study at Carlo College as opposed to somewhere else? Yeah, I, I, um, I was actually living at um, in Carlo at the time. Yeah. Um, myself and my wife bought our, our, our first house in Carlo. So um, there are a number of cl uh, courses close by. Um, but I think, you know, when I was a mature student at the time as well, uh, I had I I'd known people who had been through um, the college on on the various courses, mm. um, and just in terms of their feedback about the support that Carlow College provides um, all students, not just mature students, but it's a it's a very relaxed um, environment for learning and, and a very fertile kind of uh, environment through which learning can be carried out and the lectures here as well as I as I have um as I have discovered through my my time here in the college as a student and, and now as a uh, on the staff team mm -hmm. uh, you know the amount the, the level of support that is provided to students is second to none and that mm -hmm. was obviously a factor in my decision to to return uh to the to the teaching team as well here in the college yeah great thanks a million Francis. that's great um Okay, Annette, you have had over 30 years of experience in the private, public and voluntary sectors, particularly in social inclusion. Mm. What attracted you to a career in community development and advocacy? Well, I suppose from a very young age, that's something that would have, I, I, I suppose, it, in many ways, it comes back to the whole idea of old fashioned communities. And that would have been the, the type of community that I would have grown up in. Um, and certainly from my first, I would have, I, I operate entirely from community development principles and from a feminist standpoint, and by that I mean equality. Um, this course, I suppose, attracted me after I've worked in, in as you say, various areas mm -hmm. across. But the pro this this particular program and the ethos and approach of Carlo College, if we're talking to young people out there, mm -hmm. this gives you the skills to change the world the world that you live in, whether it is one person at a time, whether it is one community at a time, those skills are there. There is um, the lecturers are second to none. They bring with them their own experience, which is and, you know, I could name several lecturers who are still there. We work with um, and we continue to work with. Uh, and it is it is based on let's let's, you know, remove what we think. Let's let's look at what is constructed. Let's look at where our policies, our procedures, our, our perception of the world comes from. You know, let's look at our bias and then let's unpick that and let's see what we can actually do about it. So on, in, on, in very basic terms, it's a huge opportunity. The, the, Francis and Dunnick have both mentioned critical thinking. Um, as I say, you know, work a lot in disadvantage, work a lot in inclusion. Some of what is missing particularly in, in, in structured education and various different other types is critical thinking. People need to learn to think for themselves. Young people, whether they're going back to college, whether they're older like myself yes. or whoever, critical thinking is key. And it's only through that critical thinking, that embracing of research, that gentle approach to expanding your horizons and your thought processes that actually yes. enables people to go forward. And even from my, from my own perspective now, um, we work very closely. We continue to work very closely with, with Carlo College. So it's not just for Carlo College, it's not just espousing um, an academic approach. There is a praxis there as well, you know? 
So we've we've worked together. Stephanie McDermott and I have have delivered. Um, we've been in you, you know at various different academic papers internationally, and that's really around how we work as a community development organization with a countywide remit with an academic organization and so for and that might sound whatever but with the, what we have done with the students and, and and our engagement gives students if they're if they're looking at this today the opportunity to really kind of craft their own situations and their own projects and and explore their own world and how they can make a change in it yeah i think that's great because i think um I was listening to someone speak about how like now like everyone's on social media everyone's retweeting things and resharing things but it's not often their own thoughts and stuff and exactly. I think with, yeah with Carlo yeah. College I think you kind of learn how to um think for yourself and yeah. like then be like is that what I agree with you know yeah yeah, yeah. if I could come in on that as well yeah. and, and please Denise um, and I know Donica has mentioned it earlier on when you when you posed the question to him, um, but it's 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 probably the the, the thing that I've most developed in. Um, like Donica, I was um, I didn't have the confidence to speak. I think in 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 public situations, um, mm -hmm. would never have seen myself standing at the top of a class talking about social care, social care policies, disability studies. Um, or whatever. So, Carla, I, I can attribute that to 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 the the education that I have received at Carla College. They really, they nurture students um, through through their module content, firstly, um, but also through the activities, how, how classes um, and workshops are presented. They give students the opportunity to develop their communication, interpersonal skills. Um, and, and really for me, that's that personal journey and the personal development that I've um, uh, been on and, and have completed in Kerala College has been, you know, one of the, the kind of the, the greatest outcomes for me in terms of my education here at the college. Mm. Yeah, and I think that's what you need, like when you're get, getting ready for going into, you know, the workplace. Um, you can know all the information, but you really need those mm. skills as well to be able to succeed. Otherwise, you're going in there with all the information and you won't know what to do with it. So I do think it's really, really valuable. Um, so thanks for that, guys. Um, as we all know, and probably in every college, one of the most popular courses is the Arts and Humanities degree. So Donica, you studied this when it was called just Humanities then. Can you talk a bit about what attracted you to study humanities and why you liked it? I know you touched on it a little bit, but... Yeah, so uh, I had a really good guidance counsellor, probably mm -hmm. a reason why I became a guidance counsellor, maybe. His name was Niall Tully, and I went to visit him and I said, I, you know, I'm really passionate about history. And he said, there's a brilliant course in a place called Carlo College down in Carlo, and I think it would really suit you. And there was actually a girl a couple of years ahead of me who ended up in Carlo College and he gave me her number to call her and she really sold it for me and so myself and my parents both traveled down uh, to the campus to have a look around um, and I loved it and met so many friendly faces uh, the second I went in the door and I think everybody it's they really want you to go there it's not like they're given this mm -hmm. kind of air of oh if you can make it here then great it was like oh we can Whatever we can do to help you come here, uh, we'd certainly love you to settle in and 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 you know whatever you need here to to succeed uh, is a, I think a really good thing at Carroll College. Another thing was I think the smaller college was going to suit me, and I knew that I would have got lost in a campus with thirty thousand students, and I certainly wouldn't have developed like I did. I don't even know if I'd have stuck the pace, but I think because you get to know the lectures almost on a first name basis and Francis will probably be able to, to talk about that a bit more but you know I was able to go and, and visit Father Con if I needed to or Derek Coyle or Noel Kavna uh, if there was an issue if there was a problem so I was never going to be isolated um, and I knew that uh, from speaking to the, the girl who was on the undergraduate at the time and to be honest I, I can't even remember her name uh, which is terrible but um, she had really sold to me from from the standpoint that you do get to know everyone. You get to know everyone in your year. There was about just under a hundred in my year, um, and you do you get to know everybody, um, and it's brilliant. So that's kind of what sold it for me uh, was getting the perspective 
of a person who was on the undergrad and taking the time to go and visit the campus. Um, and I think that's what every student who's listening to mm. today, speak to someone who's an undergrad, a current undergrad, um, and take the time. And it's a fabulous campus, Carlo College. Mm. If you get a chance to visit it all, hopefully, fingers crossed, fingers before crossed. the end of this academic year, <laughs> you can see how lovely the campus is. Yeah, that's great, Annika. Thanks. Yeah, I do agree. I think definitely come and visit the campus if you can. And, you know, you can always email us. I know we're kind of still in the height of COVID or whatever, but just to whoever's listening, if you do want to come visit the campus, um, you can drop us an email um, and we'll, be, we'll try and facilitate that for you if we can. Uh, depending on restrictions um, but I do think that's important and it's important to speak to people but, uh, who studied both past and present I think because you get those perspectives and you, you can kind of see I studied in DCU and just what you were saying about getting lost I really struggled in my first year of university because it was massive compared to <laughs> schools you know so I, I do think you know um, for people who struggle like that I do think Carlo College it, it really benefits and, and students thrive there then when when they're in that environment um just yeah, on sorry. that sorry just on that denise as well in, in terms of the smaller college there is great uh which is, is super and it does suit mm. people and i do actually think that there needs to be much more consideration around um the type of third level education that suits different people mm. Um, and, and Carlo College, as you've said, Donica and Francis are great at that and they're great at the support. Um, but as well as being a small campus, there are great relationships with other organisations within the town and the county. So even in terms of work experience and projects and so on, um, organisations like ourselves, and we're not the only ones, they're right across the county, would be very involved in providing that work experience um, where it's required as part of as part mm. of the program um, and looking at developing different projects with students. So they're actually getting really, really valuable work experience, as well as, of course, the academic side and the, the critical thinking and the, all the various different supports. It's a really holistic um, mm. wraparound support network within the college. Um, and I think for anybody out there who's even considering it and they're kind of, you know, three people who are sitting around the table with the exception of yourself Denise I suppose are, are you know of a particular age um sorry guys I'm probably older but I'm just saying that putting that out there that um there is a you, you know we've come back as as older learners that's not to say that there is not a vibrant younger mm -hmm. cohort within the college um and a vibrant social scene and a vibrant supportive network within that so this college has really, I suppose, achieved what many don't, is that there is a cohort of older learners, absolutely, who come back with, mm -hmm. you know, various life experiences like we have. But there's also a huge cohort of younger people. Yeah. And it manages to marry that really, really well and share those experiences. Um, and even in my own, it's been great, for, as well as fantastic learning. It's been great fun. Yeah. I just want to echo that. Yes, there is a very vibrant social scene. Mm. And when I was there 20 years ago, <laughs> uh, even the rag week in Carlo is known far and wide. Uh, so yes, certainly a vibrant scene. Down there. Mm -hmm. And you look at the location of the college itself, we're right, right yeah. in, in the heart of Carlo town. Absolutely. You know, beside restaurants, beside pubs, if that's your thing, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's really well located. Visual yeah. on your doorstep, yeah. the, biggest, mm -hmm. the biggest art facility outside of Dublin um shows every week now i know we're a bit restricted by mm. covid um and again a tremendous relationship between um visual and the college and various other and and of course a huge huge understanding which we, you know in terms of interculturalism you know and yeah. a huge drive on that basis as well so it, it really is everybody is welcome mm. yeah. and, and can i come in there as well sorry yeah of course uh, yeah just on what annette was uh, was saying in terms of the the links that we have with other organizations and um, just in terms of the social care program and um, um, in terms of the social care program that we have and um, so we we pride ourselves i suppose on the uh, on the amount of agencies in the locality and beyond that we have as 
potential placement sites. Mm -hmm. So um, the social care program requires that students uh, do pra two practice placements, but we have very strong links with all those agencies that Annette has mentioned. Um, and that's one of the, the kind of key strengths of the program as well and, and the college, as, as Annette has said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's something that really attracts students, I think, when I'm giving presentations in schools or talking yeah. to them at career fairs, is that they get to go out into yeah. these organisations and experience yeah. what it's like. Yeah. Because someone could say, oh, I want to do this and then go mm. do it and it might not suit them and they might yeah. discover something else. And I think that's really great, um, yeah. you know, um, th that kind of aspect. Because not every college or university offers that facility. Uh, and they're also, um, those placement agency sites are often the employer as well, yeah. the, the future employer for the, like we find that many of our students will do a placement in an agency um, and, and are offered a job, you know, yeah. so that's, we, we pride ourselves on that as well, to having those links. Um, yeah, it well, is just great. To, sorry, sorry, Denise, just on that, just coming off of what Francis mm -hmm. said, as an employer, um, we have employed several mm -hmm. people who have come through the college over okay. the years, absolutely. Mm -hmm. but. I suppose testament to, to, to the importance that I place on, on what the college is delivering. We put our, um, when we have a new employee who is working perhaps on the social inclusion side or right across the company. And at the moment we're putting every employee through um, various different modules through Carla College, whether it's introduction to community development or social inclusion or whatever. So as an organization and as a company, we're making that commitment. Mm -hmm. Um, to the staff and that's based on the I know the quality mm. of the teaching and the lecturing and the modules so I have mm. no hesitation in, in in putting our staff through that mm. and again just again on on, on the um, as you have said there there Francis in terms of the um, the placements that are are required the placements that are provided here are quality placements a person is a, a student older student, younger student is not going to be sent from Carlo College on a placement that involves them photocopying for three months. Mm -hmm. They are strictly supervised. There is a learning plan. There's a reflective journal, all of that. Mm -hmm. So if a student from Carlo College comes to me and many have within our within the Carlo Development Partnership, they will have a plan and they'll be working right across all those projects. And so they will be coming out with really relevant and important experience mm. in the field that they have chosen to go into. Or we'll also have had an experience across maybe 10 or 12 projects, which might actually think that they may decide, OK, well, you know, I prefer to go in this direction or this mm. direction. So yeah. it's, it's huge for students. Yeah, that's great. Like, it's, and it's great to hear the connections and that you mm. send staff there as well, because it, sometimes I think that does get lost in translation. Some people um, equate the, the points. So our points would be quite low with the quality of teaching. And it just isn't the case. Like we do have expert lecturers and they're, they're really dedicated to their students. And that comes across all the time, even when you're just chatting to them. Um, so that's great. Um, OK, so yeah, a lot of students who watch this or who will watch this um, later on, um, it's coming to the time now where they're weighing up their options for what they want to study and where to where to study. Uh, Donica, you provide a lot of uh, this information and advice to students through your podcast. Um, so what advice I think can you give to students who are still considering um, their options? Yeah, so the first and foremost is that there are so many options. Um, so really explore. It's a very exciting time. Uh, students shouldn't be anxious about the CAO or about PLCs or mm. apprenticeships. Shouldn't be anxious at all. This is exciting. The world is my oyster. You know, what's the next step for me? Um, so that's what I say to them. Take this uh, with excitement and go and explore uh, for the year. Uh, absolutely talk to undergrads. Get advice from friends. Get advice from parents get advice from guidance counselors, but ultimately the decision is yours. Uh, so you have to put in that work to know what the next step is going to be for you. And mm -hmm. even to set those goals that look at, I do want to go to Carlo College, that there are certain entry requirements and there'll be certain points that'll be required for that course. So you have to mm -hmm. set your goals and work towards those goals. Mm -hmm. The Leaving Cert will be first, and then hopefully uh, everything will take its course then in August when the CEO first round offers come out. But set those goals first 
and explore with enthusiasm and not with anxiety. That's great. Thanks. Thanks, Danica. Great advice there. And yeah, it is important to set your goals and, um, you know, because then you're aiming for something and it's not as stressful, I think, uh, particularly for certain students who might struggle. Um, okay, then on the other end, Francis, what advice would you give to mature students who are thinking about returning to study? Yeah, I think, um, you know, as, as, as we have been mature students ourselves, we're, we're well positioned um, to, to, to know what it's like to be in a position where you have to make decisions um, at a certain point in your life, that would probably maybe define the rest of your, your career. So, um, yeah, so just as Donica said, you know, take your time, think about, think about it, what it is that you really want to do. I think that's the most important part of it. What is it? What is your calling? As I said earlier, you know, I felt that social care was my calling, but that it took certain circumstances in my life to to kind of bring me around to realizing that. So um, many, many of you who, who are watching this perhaps have an idea now about what their their calling is. If that's social care, if that's uh, caring, if it's, uh, you know, if, if it's if it's making a difference in the lives of others, then I think um, either our you know, any of the courses that we offer at Carroll College um, may well be the place for you to, to kind of live out that calling and, and that desire, I suppose, that's in you. Yeah. That's great. Thanks, Francis. And it's clear that in all of your careers, like in different ways, you do make a change in the community or yeah. to individuals. So I think that's great. And I think that's something people can take um, from this today. So we're coming towards the end of this now. So my last question is to tell me what is your fondest memory of studying at Carlo College? And it could be anything. <laughs> so Annette, I'll go to you first. Oh, I just, I just love the debates. We used yeah. to have tremendous debates in class. Um, and I suppose if you bring 25 people together, particularly at various ages, but particularly who have come with significant life experience, you're going to get that, you know? So I think, yeah, we used to have some really, I'm going to say interesting, um, robust debates around the state of the world and inequality and equality and all of that. Um, but I think that that really informs, to have that space and to be able to have those debates really informs any action going forward you know mm -hmm. and, and where people are at and to be able to just discuss that and you know you know if it gets heated it gets heated yeah. so we we did and we actually did have great fun you know and it was I mean you're talking over a four-year period where where people have families jobs caring responsibilities all those other things to juggle as well um but I have to say I've I've won loads of wonderful memories but yeah, absolutely the whole idea of, you know, let's, you know, talk about where, where we're at and what our beliefs are mm. and critical analysis, that has to be me. Yeah, that's great. Uh, Francis? Yeah, um, where, where, where do I start? No, um, <laughs> actually, just before um, this webinar today, I, I, my phone was ringing and it was a, it was a friend, um, it was a friend for college who was ringing to see what I'd be up for, uh, up for a coffee. So this is like, this is going back um, when I was in college, like it's, it's seven, eight years ago since I left college. I still have the friends that I, that I, that I made in college. So that's, that's, that's one thing. I just wanted to say that before I get on to the main thing. I think it's, um, it's really the achievement. It's that, it's the achievements that you gain while you're in college. You know, it's, it's getting through the first year passing your your, your first year exams, your second year, and it all builds confidence um, sense of value in yourself and of yourself but when you get your degree at the end of it and you walk out the door with your with your degree it's just this great sense of achievement I think for, uh, for anybody but it, that's um, for me particularly at that time who was a little bit uncertain about what the career path would be for me um, that that probably it's the achievement is probably the thing um, and that that has allowed me to go on and, and, and complete a master's in applied so, social research in trinity and now uh, undertaking a phd um, a doctorate in, in tu dublin as well so it, it's i suppose it spurred me on to seek out further achievements for myself mm -hmm. you know so it's been the stepping stone for for those achievements i think great thanks Francis. and finally donica 
Yeah, for me, like Francis, it would absolutely mm. be the friendships that I made throughout the four years. So not only the friendships with the, with the people on the course, but even to this day, I have three friends from St. Ambrose University, and I know Carroll College uh, has a tight connection with St. Ambrose. And we still speak, we're on a WhatsApp group. Uh, one of them, the St. Ambrose guys, he, he lives in Minnesota and his wife's from Minnesota. And only a couple of years ago, he came back to the Carroll Cathedral to get married and uh, we all met up again at an all. It was brilliant. Even friendships uh, with the lecturers, like Father Con, who's the president of the college, actually christened my eldest daughter. Um, like things like that you're never going to get at a large university. So I got to know everyone, got to make brilliant friends, both home and abroad, and then the connections you make with the lecturers as well. And even those friendships can build up into networking uh, because I know friends who've helped each other get jobs, I have friends right around the world. A friend of my course is actually principal in a school in Moscow. Um, I have a friend who teaches out in Italy. Uh, you know, there's so many far and wide uh, Carlo College alumni right throughout the world. And it's great if you, you know, have those friendships that you could maybe travel to those places, work in those places, meet up with friends. It's it, one of the last uh, uh, gatherings of... of um, of Carroll College alumni I was at was actually out in Zurich in Switzerland. And uh, there was about eight or nine of us met up out there and it was great fun. So absolutely, that would be my lasting and still to this day, uh, friendships that I have. That's great to see that it continues on then into the years. Like it's really important, you know, as you go on. I, I'd have a, a, a group of friends from college as well. And it's lovely to have that because I suppose it just, it keeps that memory alive, I suppose, of that time. Um, so that's great. This has been lovely chatting to you all. Great comments from you all. And it's great to see you all doing such good work um, in the community and in your chosen careers. And I'm sure this will be so helpful to people because I can talk about what past graduates have done, but to hear them talk for themselves really is invaluable, I think, to people who are looking at different careers. So thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Denise. So no thanks for thank you, today. Denise. Thanks, Denise. No worries. Thanks, guys. And as always, if any of uh, anybody watching has any questions on anything they've seen today or anything about careers, you can pop them in a Q&A box on our live um, homepage and we'll be happy to answer them there. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Denise. Thank bye you. Bye, Denise. Bye, bye, bye everybody. Bye. Bye.